Hi everyone and welcome to Moonstone Makes. Thank you for being here today. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about books. I'm going to talk about the best book I've read so far, the worst book I've read so far, my biggest disappointment, and the character that I now have a crush on. This is the 2022 mid-year book freakout tag. Okay, so there's a bunch of questions that I'm going to answer. I'm going to try to go through them really fast because it's a lot. The first one is the best book you've read so far this year. And I'm going to tell you my honorable mentions first before I tell you my very favorite. The first runner up for best book so far this year is The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. This is a feminist gothic novel. Uh, it's horrifying and it's beautiful and it's just it's lovely and grotesque at the same time if you like gothic if you like feminist stuff if you like Angela Carter this is wonderful next honorable mention is station 11 by Emily st. John Mandel I loved this book so much uh, you've probably heard of it it's very popular it has a TV show that's also very popular and people who read the book also loved the TV show commonly I didn't I tried to watch it it wasn't my thing but the book is incredible. It's a dystopian fiction. It follows a traveling caravan of actors and musicians after the end of the world. You get to know a pretty small cast of characters in this current post-apocalyptic time, but also during their lives pre-end of the world. And it's just, it's just beautiful. It's a it's a wonderful character study. It's so beautifully told. The story is just so engrossing and wonderful. And I love dystopian post-apocalyptic fiction, especially if you throw in like a traveling caravan of Shakespearean actors. Like it's so good. It's so good. Next is Piranesi. It's short. It's concise. It's cool. It keeps you like weirdly guessing and kind of maybe haunted, but it's also kind of funny. And it's just like the twists in it are just so like neat and unexpected and but it's also like I said short and concise and beautiful and the imagery is like very dark with pillars and statues and halls it's about this person named Piranesi who lives in a house that contains the sea and this Piranesi keeps track of the tides and he's a chronicler he's a journaler and he's an indexer and he's just trying to chronicle the natural events of this world which is just this house with the ocean in it and it's weird and you're like what the fuck is going on but it's so cool and it's so short and it's just so like perfect it's perfect and i love it it's so good it's so good my very favorite book of the year so far is the five wounds by Kristen valdez quaid i love this book so much what do i even say about this book it's the story of a family in New Mexico, and the father is a deadbeat dad who is an alcoholic. He's a grown up, but he still lives with his mom, who supports him, who enables him. And he is an estranged father to his 15 year old daughter. He's never been there for her. She lives in a different city. And one day she shows up on his doorstep. She's eight months pregnant and she's kind of cut her ties with her mom and she's now going to live with her dad who she doesn't really know very well and his mom who she loves. Uh, this family is Chicano and it's just such a beautiful glimpse of this life of this Mexican-American family trying to live their life. <laughs> <laughs> it's really beautiful and it's really tragic. The people in here are messed up. They they try really hard, but they're very flawed. But the characters are so lovable, even though they're really messed up to each other. And I just found this book to be really relatable. Like the way these characters talk to each other, for one, is really funny, even though it's really messed up. Like they're not nice to each other. They just are not cool to each other but including the way the dad treats his 15 year old pregnant daughter it's not cool but it's funny in this weird tragic way and it's like the dialogue in this book rem I felt like I was a kid again living with my family who is Mexican who is Chicano who's Mexican-American I'm third generation 
the 15 year old this in this book is third generation and i could just like relate to so much of how this book played out what these characters did how they were struggling how they were trying but they're just like not kind of i don't know this book is hard to describe but it's wonderful it's really beautiful this book deals with religious trauma with substance abuse with physical and emotional abuse it talks about power dynamics and racial inequalities and economic inequalities and it's just so beautifully done it's a really deep character study it's the kind of book where it's kind of just like a glimpse into these people's lives there's a small cast of characters you're just kind of following them around for about a year seeing what happens seeing what they do they all try really hard to do good they all mess up really bad and it's just really good like i said i found so much of this book relatable in a way that like i haven't found before in a book there's this element of the mexican-american lifestyle the chicano lifestyle that so far i haven't found a lot of in literature and it's something that i really care about and this book did it good it actually started like a whole rabbit hole for me of chicano literature and there's some really good stuff out there but so far this is still the best i love it it's love it Okay, I already have spent too much time talking about stuff. Oh, I forgot about one more honorable mention. Oh my goodness. Arist Speaking of me going down the Chicano literature rabbit hole, I discovered Benjamin, Benjamin Alir Sands, Sands. He's written a lot of books. This one is called Aristotle and Dante, Discover the Secrets of the Universe. And it is definitely a runner up for my favorite novel of the year so far. It's about two young Chicano boys growing up in the 80s in Texas and they become friends they fall in love with each other and it's them dealing with a lot of things uh, including being gay in a time when they can't really come out because it's in the midst of the AIDS pandemic and people are getting beaten up and killed because they're gay uh, it's about being Mexican-American in the 80s in Texas and it's so good it's a YA novel and it's brilliant I love it Okay, the worst book I've read so far this year was Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. If you know me, you know that Haruki Murakami so far at least is one of my very favorite authors. I love his books. I had never read Norwegian Wood. I tried to read it. If you followed along with my book videos, you know I tried to read it late last year. I gave up on it because I hated it. <laughs> and then I finally picked it up again last month and finished it. Eh, it... I don't know, man. It's it's about this kid. He's growing up in the 60s in Japan, and he's a college student, and he's just trying to navigate his relationships. Um, he's got a few deeply connected relationships that he's like kind of going through, and mostly including three women, a couple of guys, and it's it's just like his like college guy journey. I wasn't into it. There's, you know, Murakami has a problem with sexism and with writing women in a sucky way. And this book was like, all of the stuff that I don't like about Murakami all condensed into one book. And I didn't like it. I got really annoyed by it. It did turn around in the second half. There was like one scene with this girl who like finally like isn't written stupid anymore and it picks up a little bit from there but I still didn't love it. It was just boring. It's one of his few non-magical realism books. It just takes place completely in the real world and it's just about this kid and his relationships and his sexual exploits and I just like wasn't into it. Definitely, I mean it wasn't, it was kind of terrible. I didn't like it. Worst book so far. The best sequel I've read so far. I've only read two sequels so far this year. One was Heartstopper because I read the whole Heartstopper series, which is amazing if you haven't read it yet. It's a graphic novel about uh, two high school boys and they fall in love. And it's about them. It's a high school romance. It's so feel good. It's so good. And then the other sequel that I read was A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers, which is the second in her Monk and Robot series. That isn't quite out yet. I got an art copy, which was very cool. Oh, and then I also read the sequel to Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, which is called Aristotle and Dante Dive into the Waters of the World. And I would say, I guess I probably liked Heartstopper best. Yeah, I don't know. I guess Heartstopper. Probably book two.
Heartstopper book two, best sequel. A new release that you haven't read yet, but you want to. There are two. One is The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. I don't know who this is by, but it's about a Mexican girl. She goes to Catholic school. I think she's lesbian. I only know what the title <laughs> I don't know anything about it other than the title and the cover, which is beautiful. And uh, it looks really good. It looks like all the stuff that I'm into right now, so I kind of want to read that. Uh, Nettleback is another book that... It was just released, and it's actually on the way to me in the mail right now. I don't know who it's by. I forgot, but it's on the screen. I don't know much about this book, again, uh, but a YouTuber that I really like, Willow, whose YouTube channel I'll link to below, they talked about this book in a way that just made me want to read it really bad. It's uh, it's It takes place in the 1800s. It's, like, I think supposed to be, like, a... Like a mystery solving kind of farce book. It's supposed to be really funny and it's queer. So that's all I know about it. It sounded really great and fun. So I bought it and I'm looking forward to reading it. The most anticipated release for the second half of the year for me, I don't really follow new releases that much so I don't really know what's coming out but I did look it up and I did find that a new, well what's her name? Taylor Jenkins Read book is coming out this year called Carrie Soto is Back. I've only read one Taylor Jenkins Read book and it was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And I liked it pretty good. Like I could see why everybody really likes this author and so I'm probably gonna wanna read that one when it comes out. I don't know, I kinda did the best I could with this one because I don't really follow that kind of stuff. My biggest disappointment this year was Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I know, everybody loves this book. So this is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. It's a Japanese translated fiction. It's um, a book, uh, it's a novel, and it's about a cafe in Japan where you can go to time travel. But the time travel is really weird. Like, there's a bunch of rules. It, it's not just willy-nilly tra time traveling. You have to go there, sit in a certain chair, which is normally occupied by a ghost. So you have to wait till she gets up to go to the bathroom. So if you sit in this chair, you can tell them when you want to go to, and it'll take you there, but you stay in that chair. So like, you, you're just like going to a different time in the cafe, and you can't leave the chair. And you have to be ready to return to the present by the time your coffee gets cold and you go back by the coffee getting port anyway. It's like, I don't know, it's like a cutesy idea and I was really intrigued by that idea. Um, and it's told in a series of like four or five vignettes, just like different stories of the different people that frequent this cafe and do their time traveling. And I kind of found it just kind of boring, really. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Something about it was just boring to me. I wasn't that intrigued by the characters or by their stories or by the time travel element. I was really excited about it because for one, this cover is just like crazy beautiful. I love this cover. This just like looks like a book you wanna eat, right? It's just like, oh, it's really good. And it's really nice and short. People love this book, like love it. And I understand why people like it. I just, it's just like kinda of wasn't my thing. So I was very excited about this book, but it's okay. It's fine, like it's fine. I just like didn't love it. Biggest surprise, The Five Wounds. I think I was just, I think I picked it because I was just like, couldn't believe how much I loved it. And I like, just kind of didn't know a book like this was out there. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. Favorite new authors. So I think I have three. One is Kristen Valdez Quaid because she wrote The Five Wounds and it's like my new favorite book of all time. But she also wrote this other book of short stories. It's the only other thing she's published in book form. And I just finished reading that too, and I didn't love it as much. I feel like what I've learned about her is that her writing style is just like this picture. You're just kind of thrown into someone's life for like a minute, and that's all you get. There's not like, it's not like the traditional story arc where there's like much closure, and that's how a lot of her short stories are too. You're just kind of like shown a piece of this person's life, and then you're gone. And I didn't love it as much for short stories, but... I still really love her because of the five wounds. Also, Benjamin Alir Sands. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but he's the one who wrote the Aristotle and Dante series. He also wrote a bunch of other books. He's another Chicano author. He writes YA fiction and adult fiction. 
And I just loved Aristotle and Dante so much. And I really want to read more of his stuff. I have another one of his books called The Inexplicable Logic of My Life that I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited about it. Also, Angela Carter. She's not, none of these authors are new, but they're all new to me. Angela Carter is someone I can't believe I've never known about before. She wrote The Magic Toy Shop. She also wrote The Circus one. Nights at the Circus, which I also really loved. And she wrote this book, which I haven't read yet, called The Bloody Chamber, which I think might be a very popular one of hers. It's a series of retellings of like classic fairy tales or something, kind of done in more of a feminist, really dark kind of style. And I just, I really love Angela Carter. I never read her before this year. And she wrote in like, I think between the 60s and the 80s, maybe something like that. And her work is just like beautiful and it's dark and it's feminist and it's just n not any of it is sugar-coated. It's very gothic. It's just very troubling and it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I love Angela Carter. Newest fictional crush is Ari Mendoza from Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. His name is Aristotle Mendoza. He goes by Ari and he's 15. <laughs> And he's a brooding, quiet Mexican kid living in Texas. He has no friends. At least he doesn't think he has friends because he's so, like, wrapped up in himself. And he thinks too much. He analyzes things too much. He's very dark and doesn't have a lot of self-esteem. He gets into fights, but it's not because he's a bully. He gets into fights because he's trying to protect people that he doesn't even know he cares about. And he's just a badass, and he's so cool, and I just am in love with him. And then he meets Dante, and Dante softens him up, and he just, ugh. He, like, learns about himself. He learns to love himself. I don't know. He's great. He's great. I love Ari Mendoza. I, mm. Knew his favorite character in general? This one was hard. I don't know. I think it's a tie between Piranesi and Angel from The Five Wounds. Angel is the 15-year-old pregnant girl. She's just freaking funny, and she's gone through so much trauma with her parents and the people around them and her that she just, she, she she's just so cool. She, I don't know. She, I really like her. And then Piranesi is just a super cool character. Like he lives this crazy mysterious life in this weird house. And he's just, his natural inclination is to just be positive and like write stuff down. And like, okay, the tides are doing this right now in the 14th hall and the 17th day after the, the birds did the thing. And he's very cool. A book that made me cry this year. <laughs> um, the one that I remember, probably a couple of them. I've like kind of done the like, the single manly tear during a few of the books that I've read so far. But the big one was Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Waters of the World, which was the sequel to the second Aristotle and Dante book. And it didn't necessarily make me cry because it was like so like beautifully sad or anything, but it, it just, it reminded me of some of my own personal trauma, some of the stuff that the characters go through. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's something to do with their, I want to say it's something to do with their dad because I don't want to make my dad sound traumatic or anything. But I'm just going to tell you because it's it's not that big of a... I mean, it's a spoiler. So if you don't want to be spoiled for the second Aristotle and Dante book, maybe skip ahead a couple minutes. But at some point in the book, Aristotle, Ari's dad unexpectedly dies. And that happened to me when I was 18. And for some reason, just this one night, I was reading this book and I was like, I had had a drink. And like Lucy, my four-year-old daughter, was like having a really bad bedtime and just like having a hard time going to sleep, you know, that kind of thing. And I was in my head getting frustrated with that. And then I read this whole scene of Ari, Ari's dad dying and like how he was processing it. And then of course it reminded me of my own dad dying when I was a teenager and it just all fell apart. <laughs> I had a little mini sob fest. It was good though, it was good. So that's the book that made me cry, Aristotle and Dante. The book that made me happy, by far, Heartstopper. Heartstopper, like I said before, is a series so far of four graphic novels based on a webcomic by, I didn't even tell you who it was by, Alice Oseman, by Alice Oseman. 
And uh, it's just, it's like I said, it's a high school love story between these two boys and peripher peripherally a couple of their friends too. It's such a feel good, like endorphin producing book. It's just like, it's, it's so good. It's so cute and fun and happy and funny and like it's just the like most satisfying like little love story but at the same time it does like deal with a lot of really serious things like figuring out your own sexuality and coming out and eating disorders and bullying and it's just so well done and even though it deals with all these heavy real issues it still manages to just be like super just like like you just you just feel really good when you it just made me happy. Oh, it also made me cry. So that one did that too, certain parts. But yeah, if you just want something that's gonna like be really cute and fun and happy and wonderful, Heartstopper. The most beautiful book that I've gotten this year. I have four. <laughs> the first is the Iliad Crest. I just love this color. I think it's absolutely beautiful and wonderful. Blood in the Mist by Hope Mearleys. This is embossed. All these red flowers are embossed. Beautiful. A new translation of the Metamorphosis. Look at that. Looks like a bug. Mm. And The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. It's just a really pretty cover illustration and stuff. I love it. And the last question is books that I need to read by the end of the year. I don't like to... Like, I don't have anything that I need to read by the end of the year, but I did get a pretty big stack of birthday books. It was my birthday in May, and um, my family, mostly Colin, my husband, got me every single book on my Amazon wish list, and it was a lot. It's, it's this. <laughs> so these are all the books. These are most of the books that I've gotten for my birthday. I've finished already maybe four or five of them. So this is the rest of the stack that I got for my birthday and I would love to read all my birthday books by the end of the year. So they are the ones that I haven't read yet that I got for my birthday. Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. Book of Poetry by Wendy Cope called Serious Concerns. The Alienist and Other Stories by Machado de Assis. Scattered All Over the Earth by Yoko Tawara. A Joan Didion collection called Slouching Toward Bethlehem. Blood in the Mist. The new Metamorphosis translation. I've already read the Metamorphosis, but I read the old translation and I just thought this cover was really cool and I thought it'd be fun to read a new translation. Fun fact, Kafka was one of my very first literary loves when I was in my early 20s. I was kind of obsessed with Kafka. The Bloody Chamber. This was one of my birthday books. A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. And The Collective Poems of Sylvia Plath. So I hope to read those books by the end of the year, plus more. I've read, so far this year, I've read 46 books and I'm having a lot of fun. That's a lot, that's a lot for me. This is the first year I've ever read that many books, but I'm really enjoying it and I hope to read a lot more. So I would love to hear about what you've been reading. If you wanna answer any of these questions in this tag, I'm going to put all the questions below, and if you want to answer any of them with me, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. Okay, thanks for being here. I will see you next time. I hope you're reading and stuff. Okay, love you.